Hello guys, um, so I got this VCI on Sunday, I'm sorry for not been keeping up with the reviews a lot, you see I've been tired a lot, I actually have a re real job, been working for like, I always work 3 hours straight in a extremely hot, in a, not extremely hot, but a hot weather, and I get tired easily, and I work, and it, and it requires a lot of um, physical activity, so, you know, like, people do get tired from using too much physical, doing too much physical activity. So I'm very sorry for the, uh, late reviews. I got a lot of reviewing to do. Well, I got this, um, hold on, let's see if I can open this real one more thing. I have to, I'm gonna, I had, I, I didn't review this Zenith, I didn't review this MS, did I review the MS? No, I don't think I did. Um, I have this SVHS Mitsubishi I should review, I'm going to review soon. That definitely should be reviewed, I mean, it's SVHS. And Mr. Manioscope's Toshiba M751. And it has a very special feature too. And I like this feature for that reason. You'll find out when I review it. Or you can find out by watching his videos. He did he he did film his um from from his end when he had that VCR. No, but let's focus on this Magnavox right here. So let me show you the front. It's very lightweight VCR and I know in I bet you guys know why. Model number is very. It's pretty long. Um, VR six zero one BMG two three. Usually, VCRs ending with the don't end with BMG or something. They normally end with AT one or AT zero AT Z something. It doesn't normally end with BMG, but um, doesn't matter. Oh, here's the inside. It's actually a Funai built unit, but it's actually a good Funai built chassis. It's not bad actually. It's not. It's not even that bad. So what I'm trying to say is, it's better build than the other ones with the with with the Funai one with the cam gear underneath and um, the ones found in mostly VCR DVD combos, of course. So yeah, this is a lot. This is better built, and um, it has and I can and it has cool features, to, well not cool features, but mechanically it has cool features and um, I already replaced the capstan belt and the loading belt just to be sure they were both good, but it's always good to replace belts after a couple years according to Steery Sound Electronics on their website oh, that piece just fell off oh god, now Silver is going to be mad at me I'm sorry man Okay, so, this piece just fell off. See if I can put it back. I don't think it's, I don't think it's nothing too much to worry about right now, but still, I should put this back if it's possible. Damn it. Alright, so I successfully put this piece back in. So, anyway, let's get to the review. The review. Again, it's a low-end VCR, it's a cheaply built machine but it's not a bad Funai built machine actually um it's just as good as the uh mm, the Samsung built VCRs found in mostly VCR DVD combos it's just as good if there was gonna be if there was gonna be like a problem with this VCR it would be most likely the mold switch that needs to be cleaned like on the Samsung so these are really these are badly these are built not bad actually these are pretty good this VCR had to be clean and greased and I already done that it, here's this little silver plate here I took off so you can see the cassette in action put that back on later so my TV's on so um totally forgot to turn it off um hold on let me, let me just uh turn it off for just one second there we go Okay. The caps. You must be wondering how the capstan motor um takes the tape in. I mean, not takes load the guides and all. Um. Well, it's pretty simple. There's actually a gear. You see, this gear right there actually turns. And um, I think this gear lines up with it as well. And, and there's another gear here that turns the uh, tape guides and all. 
and it does the same with unloading too. And the loading motor does the rest. But it, it only, but it, the loading motor um, takes the tape, the cassette carriage in, and uh, yeah, it's pretty simple from the top. I wish you could see the bottom side, but you cannot. What I could do is take the front plate off, and um, you know what? I might as well do that right now. I'm just gonna put my um, camera down just a one second. There we go. Take the front plate off. It's very easy to take off. And now we can see a little bit of the bottom side. The only thing we can see is the cam gear and the mold switch in action. You can see a little bit of the mechanism from here as well. There's the other uh, belt. Hmm. Let me put the set in so I can show you how this operates. I'm gonna use a cassette with no tape so um well it won't eat it but still I'd like to show you um it's lightweight and all so let's see if it, let me just show you just hold on first I'll show you the top side in action. But I'm gonna this time I'm gonna use the tape for this one. So you can see the tape path and all. Got my old good movie, Boys in the Hood. It's a pretty good film with Ice Cube, my boy Ice Cube. And, uh, yeah, let's see it. Not oh, press rewind. Reject. And on these particular chassis, there's this problem with this um, loading assembly right here. One of the gears here tends to break, and um, that will that will um, basically mean that if that gear breaks, basically the cassette carriage will not go in, will not eject at all. You have to. Um, so what I'm just saying is, when the, I mean, it, can, it will still take the tape in. But when it ejects, it will the cassette carriage will not lift back up. You have to manually um, move it. So, and um, this gear is currently this assembly is currently okay. I hope this doesn't break. If this breaks, which I don't think it will, I will show you a video. And let me just and I'm now here to show you the uh, loading assembly. There's nothing really cool on the left, you just see this little gear there. Now let's take a look at the bottom side. You can see the cam gear pretty well from here. And the sliding plate. And the mold switch. Which I, of course I've already cleaned. Just to be sure. So the table wouldn't get eaten. Take a look at these, see if you can see the, uh... I'm gonna look on my camera too, so I can see if I can actually somehow see the, uh... Well, let me move my light a little bit. So I can see the, uh... A little bit of the mechanism from here. Because I would like to see it from here. Oh! You actually can see it a little bit. I'm gonna do that again, because it was all it was a little bit blurry. Did you see that? And that was all. That was pretty cool. Did you see that again? It's because it was a little bit blurry. This camera needs good. I need a better camera, man. I'm not kidding. Beautiful. Beautiful. And, oh, that's not it. There's, there's one more thing. 
on this idler assembly, there's actually two gears. The bottom one's for play, the top one's for rewind fast forward. And um, these actually, but that's not all, these move up and down. I'll show you what I mean. I have to load it first manually. Let's watch this. You see that? Oh, you see? Um, I don't know if you see it pretty well, but uh, hold on. Let me just do this again. Cause I have, I have this trick I learned a few one time by myself. I have this rubbing alcohol cap. Cleaning cap or something like cap from a cleaner, and I just put this there and we'll just hold the guide. And hold the lid of the guide and hold the sensor down. So cover the sensor so we'll be staying in play. So let's see here. That's it. Yeah, you still have to do it at the right time. Let me try again. So I was over tapes. There we go. You see the bomb gear? Yeah, see that? That's for play. You can see the bomb gear is, is against the uh, spindle right there. And watch what happens when I go into fast forward. How about press the wrong button? Dang it. I think I accidentally. Um, Yeah, I accidentally pressed on um, a different button. I don't think I pressed stop. Hold on. It's kind of hard to identify the buttons on the without the front cover on. Oh, by. Hmm. I think you do need to hold it with my hand. I think I do need to hold it with my fingers. Let me show you. I'm very sorry about all of this. Fast forward. Ah, oh, I pressed. Then when I press eject. Or did I press record? Hmm. Hold on. Yeah, I think I press record. Real quick, I'm gonna press. We're gonna press the button on my feet this time. Watch, that gear just went down in the place. Does the same thing with fast forward. Now it's going to rewind. Now it's going to turn off because there's no tape there. This is a pretty nice VCR. Well, mechanically, that light means there's an error, but it's because there's no tape in there. Power. There we go. Now I'm going to show you the picture quality, and I will, um, right after I put the front cover back on. Alright, so I hooked up my VCR to this TV, and on this one, when it press play with no tape in it, it shows no cassette. No, well, I don't think I've seen any other Funai VCRs, um, with that, with a different chassis blinking that. But I could be wrong. Let me know if you saw the same display, that's the same no cassette display in a different Funai chassis. I'm gonna use a tape that I haven't used in a bit. I'm gonna use my color bars tape. It shows you the. It tells me um. I can tell if the quality and audio is good from this. I made this myself. Well, of course, I didn't make the tape. I um, of course, I recorded um. A color bars thing offline online then I put it onto this tape and we have a picture the picture is pretty good looks normal for a typical VHS 
and the audio is audio is pretty good too. Oops, I accidentally pressed a different button. Let me exit out of that. Hold on. It's kind of hard to control the buttons with my feet while holding the camera. Forward search. Oop, I pressed pause. It has a very good pause, too. I mean, what do you expect? It's a forehead hi fi stereo. And, of course, it's rewind. <sighs> I just forgot one thing. I totally forgot to show you the fast forward and rewind. <sighs> I don't want to take the VCR apart again, but I can just do this like I do at thrift stores. You'll see it fine from here. And it's not fast. And you know, obviously you guys would know that Funai VCRs do not rewind it fast forward fast. I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna rewind this at the beginning so I can, uh... Just for one at the beginning, just cause. It's working fine. And eject. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and um and I will definitely get a rare VCR this month but I was very close to winning a Betamax VCR off eBay I lost the auction though, I was very close and it was working too, it was a Sony Super Beta Hi-Fi SL HF450 I almost won that and some guy just took it away from me god damn it look, I'm trying to look for, I'm trying to make up for what I, why I lost, and look for a cool rare VCR online, and um, I'll let you know if I find one in my in the next review, and I won't show you um, the uh, VCR until I get it, of course. Oh, and uh, on August 18th and through the 21st, I'm going to be in Maine, and in one of those days, I will go. I'm going to a Goodwill there. And I've got a rare VCR one time there that I didn't even review. It was a very hard VCR to fix, and I obviously ended up breaking it. I was trying to take the circuit board off on the bottom side. It was a rare JVC made NEC VCR. Um, I do not have photos of it, but it, it was a pretty good VCR. I wish I, I wish I, um, wish I was able to fix it. And um, if I saw a rare VCR there one time, I could see another. I could find another rare VCR there again. Hmm. Let's hope I do. Let's hope. The, let's hope there's gonna be a Betamax VCR. Well, we can only hope for the best. So that's gonna be it for this video, and that's all the news for now. And um, be kind of rewind.